perfectly centered that sums you up <laughs> and elegantly so too kane indeed <laughs> Well done. I'm doing tea as we go along. Oh, of course, that's you. It is. Okay, we're good to start. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us, whether that's live or on our recording. I know I say this often because it's true, but I am so excited about today. So many of you have asked about what can we do at this time to help build back a better normal? How can we add more purpose to our lives? How can we support in this extraordinary uh, transition out of a vortex of change? You've heard me talk before about this vortex of change from a global health pandemic, climate change, deep, deep uh, inclusion and diversity, and of course, technology change. So I thought I would bring together some amazing experts to talk to you uh, and for us to discuss mission, purpose, and impact. Firstly, it, it starts with us, taking care of us and then taking care of others around us. But I think we're gonna share some really interesting stories today. First of all, from the lovely Manny Armadi, I have known Manny for over two decades. He usually says when I say that he was just 10 when he met me, which I want to tell you is a lie right, right from the get-go. <laughs> uh, uh, we, were, we were brought together as global leaders for tomorrow at Davos, and we got to work on an amazing project, bringing a corporate social responsibility index in to the FTSE uh, 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 100. Manny is uh, uh, an MVO, uh, uh, which is an extraordinary award bestowed uh, uh, by the Queen. He's the CEO of Cause and Effect. He'll talk about that a little in a minute. And he's also board director and soon to be trustee of Mission uh, uh, Beyond. So welcome Manny uh, and joining Manny we have the equally lovely and perfectly matched in dress, uh, Kane Ulla. Uh, 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 I have only known Kane uh, uh, for about, um, well, since last August, to be honest. And he regularly says to me, Harriet, we've only just started working together. It feels like we've known each other an absolute lifetime. Kane is uh, uh, a founder uh, of businesses, an 11 year, CEO at Red Badger, a digital consultancy, a board director and soon to be trustee of, of, of Mission Beyond. So welcome Kane too. Thank you. Fabulous. So let's kick off. Manny, I, I think you're one of the best in the world at explaining what it is on a daily basis to work with purpose at your core, to have social impact and to also Sort of run a business and go about life in a sort of um, a meaningful way. So I'd love to get your views, and so would others, on how you would describe that as an overarching concept. <clears throat> Harriet, thank you very much. Um, and um, I have, as you said, known you for a couple of decades. And um, uh, thank you for inviting me on here. You are a life force, and. Um, anyhow, uh, it's good to be here. Uh, you've set the bar very high in terms of your uh, your description of me, um, but I'm I'm glad to be able to to be here and to and to share with with colleagues. Um, yeah, purpose, of course, can be defined in in many ways, and it, 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 that applies at different levels. So the classic dictionary de 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 definition is that purpose is about um, the reason for for which uh, uh, something exists, right? And uh, so the reason why it exists is. Uh, it's, it's very clear. So in an organizational terms, it's about, um, if you're talking about a company or an organization, it's about the fundamental reason, reason for being of the entity, the enterprise, uh, et cetera. Um, and it sounds like a very straightforward thing because in, the, in recent decades, companies in particular have defined purpose or they've the defined a reason for being very narrowly around um, um, generation of profit, shareholder value, Etc., which of course is very important because you can't, as a business, 
um, you know, uh, live long if you're not looking after profitability, etc., and so on. But an overly narrow definition um, can have big disadvantages. Uh, so you will recall you talked, um, um, Harriet, about our, our um, World Economic Forum Davos days and so on. We spent some time in New York a couple of days trying to define the role of the company. And what we came up with was this def this this definition, very short, that, the role, that although the role of the, the shareholder in the, in the corporate framework is important, uh, actually companies exist to create enduring shareholder value. And the insertion of the word enduring is really powerful uh, because it begs the question, um, what, now what does that mean? So for a company to en endure over time, it has to look at, um, at the world around it. It can't overly narrowly focus on just short term profitability, quarter by quarter, etc. And so, so purpose um, requires companies to think really deeply and deliberately about their role in society, their impact on society and so on, and how they go about creating shareholder value. So you ask about the company I lead. Um, so we exist, so uh, you will know I'm in my third career, I have a sector private sector background and not-for-profit sector background, and now lead c and advisory, and we position ourselves as a business and society advisory firm, cross-sector, working across sectors with uh, uh, large international companies and as well as non-profit entities and international agencies, etc. Um, but uh, in the main, purpose on the corporate side is about putting societal consideration at the heart of business strategy and living it through business practice. And that implies looking across the entire value chain about how a company goes about doing its business. So how it sources, markets, distributes its products and services, how it treats its, its employees um, and its suppliers. You know, all of that is very important. Um, so in the last few years or so, we've seen, I'm pleased to say, uh, a strong movement towards the concept of purpose-led growth. Uh, for big companies and small companies. And it appears, uh, in fact, we're pretty sure, and we can see lots of evidence that actually the pandemic has um, accelerated that drive, that movement towards purpose-led growth. Uh, you also, I think at the beginning, we're talking about individuals and there'll be individuals listening to this. So at an individual level, how can we make a difference? What is our purpose um, um, in addition to uh, you know, earning enough to, to to live and to look after our families. What is our role in life? What's our purpose in society? And so on. So it begs all of us to think about that and think about how we contribute to our local communities, um, our national communities, our global communities, and so on. So that concept of deliberate thought and thinking about what can I best do? How do I, in the same way that a company needs to think about how it harnesses its assets, its, its, its people, its knowledge, its know-how, its relationships, individuals can do similarly within their organi organizations and outside of their organizations. I'll stop for now. We can, we can pick up some of the, the themes. Absolutely, we will. And we have lots of people joining so uh, to hear what you, Manny, and you, Kane, have to say. So thank you uh, to the people joining. So in the midst of, uh, uh, of that, Kane, Manny talked about sort of purpose-led growth. And you're sort of, you've lived and breathed this as a business founder, an entrepreneur who's who's sort of had what Manny described at the core uh, and, and through to really creating with your colleagues at Red Badger Mission Beyond. Tell us a little bit about that in, in your words, how what Manny said you've lived, not that Manny hasn't lived and breathed it, he has, but so have you in a very different way. Yeah, thanks for inviting me today, Harriet. Lovely to be here. Um, yeah, so... Now, when we founded, so Red Badger, you know, as you described, is a digital consultancy. We um, do large-scale digital innovation, transformation, um, and help build kind of sustainability for, for blue chips. Uh, but when Stu, Dave, and I founded it in May 2010, it was founded on really strong values. You know, we've, we've always been a conscious business. And so what Manny talks about there around <clears throat> taking our role in the world around us in community you know, and colleagues and and all of that sort of stuff you know we've very we've been very very purpose driven from the from the very beginning um and that's resulted in us you know in throughout our history doing lots of initiatives in this space pro bono work for charities um you know sponsoring other charities donating laptops to refugees to code all of all of that sort of stuff 
Um, <clears throat> and then in uh, in uh, late 2019, a few of the badges went to the Economist Innovation Summit, and and there they <clears throat> listened to um, a talk by Dr. Mariana Matsukato, who's a, a, a famous and very very inspiring economist. Um, <clears throat> And she was talking about her mission-based approach on stage at the Economist uh, Innovation Summit. Um, and the mission-based approach is kind of how do you uh, nurture innovation, cross-sector collaboration to tackle systemic and society-wide problems? She, she, she calls them the grand challenges. So the grand challenges, uh, good examples of a grand challenge would be the UN Sustainable Development Goals, you know, that no poverty, health and well-being, reducing inequalities, and um, climate change. So they're all very, very huge, um, huge kind of challenges. Um, and so, you know, seeing Dr. Mariana's talk sparked an idea in some of the badges. It wasn't my idea. It was a, it was a, you know, some of the talent inside of Red Badger. So Joe Pace. Mara, um, Andrea, Sean, to give them give the the talent some names, um, mm -hmm. and they thought, right, we'll take the principles of Dr. Matsukato uh, and that mission based approach and has influence, and then how can we then apply Red Badger's digital innovation, digital transformation expertise to that approach to then have um, impact on systemic wide challenges like the, the grand challenges um, and so over the last sort of 12 months really Red Badger uh, came up with the idea of Mission Beyond um, they've invested a great deal in incubating that idea building a community around it building coalitions so part of the Mariana model of mission-based approach is the power of diverse thinking through cross-sector collaboration. So you form coalitions of many organisations from different sectors all working together and bringing their di diverse thought to the challenge of systemic change. Um, and so how can we leverage the power of diverse thought in coalitions plus digital innovation to have impact on society and the environment? And that is fundamentally the kind of how Mission Beyond was birthed. Mm. And then we sort of took uh, that amazing construct. And then, Manny, I think it would be really super to describe how we then sort of focused on where we could have the greatest impact. After taking all of the coalition members' inputs, we found uh, an area that we would go uh, uh, innovate around with purpose, spent over a thousand hours listening uh, to uh, those from, you know, uh, uh, those who have the potential to rise through to corporations who who want to, to, to hire them. So it'd be fantastic to hear from you how we focused on and came to pick uh, uh, where we would all go build and create something marvelous before we describe what that is. Yeah, so um, I'm tempted to dive straight into what that is. But um, <laughs> uh, yes, so um, unfortunately, there are um, lots and lots of problems and challenges um, in society, environmental, social, health, um, etc. cetera. Um, and, um, and thankfully, people have done some, some great thinking. So the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, in a sense, is sort of the, the world's to, must-do list, actually. Um, 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 and is built on the concept of all sectors and all actors playing their part in addressing those problems and in doing so to create value for themselves. So it's based on what I like to describe as this concept of enlightened self-interest, so win-win, uh, right? So if I, if, I, if I gain some value and someone else gains value, um, then uh, we all benefit and the solutions that we find together will endure um, you know, over the longer term and so on. So based, based on that, we looked at, you know, these various issues. But one of the things that's really important uh, in purposeful work um, is to also think about where there is so, so this matching of competency and appetite. 
right? So um, you got to be competent to be able to solve the problem that, you, that you're putting in front of you. So your organization must have the skills, the competence, and so on. But it also needs to match that with the appetite. So how we came to land on the topic, I think, that you were talking about, um, Harriet, was because the group of people we got together from different companies, different sectors, um, uh, non-profits, and so on, alighted around the, the, the topic um, of actually of, um, uh, of social mobility and the gaps in, in that area. Yeah. And then taking that brilliantly described by Manny uh, came, because I think some of the questions about the journey, okay, you've got this big picture, you've got, um, you, you, you had some inspiration, you've coalesced around an idea uh, of real need, uh, in our case, young people going from education to work, uh, young adults who have the potential to rise from perhaps challenging backgrounds. How did we then, uh, 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 in your view, sort of create something? Because a number of people have written and shared, and it's certainly been my no own observation, that there's some wonderful talking that goes on, incredible you know, thinking as well. But how did the group move from that to creation, to building something? Before we describe what it is, how, how was that brought together to come from great thought, great people, super ideas into creation and building the, the combination of purpose and innovation-led growth here is quite extraordinary. How would you describe it? Yeah, so we ran two events last year to kind of describe the principles of Mission Beyond and build the community. And what would have come through those events that was very clear was that Mission Beyond is about action. <laughs> it's not about talking. It's about actually getting stuff done. It's about defining metrics and then moving the needle on those metrics. And so, once we brought the first coalition together around social mobility, uh, which was uh, came through from the passions of the coalition themselves, they drove the the mission. Um, we very very quickly defined our terms of reference. So, what are the metrics that we want to move the needle on? And then we used uh, Red Badger resources and capability to move into our innovation process. So, product strategy, doing design sprints. Uh, really understanding the needs that are out there in the market, building products like one product every week and then testing that to test the desirability and where the, the most value that we can provide and the most impact that we can provide is. And then we've kind of over the last few months iterated on that and then started to um, kind of expand out the idea that was came out of the original design sprints and starting to go deeper into the product and the platform over a over yeah. a further three month innovation period um so we're two weeks away from finishing the mvp for the product and the platform um and uh yeah so that's kind of how it is incubated yeah. and how, how we got to right. Harry, Harry, can, I just, uh, can i just jump in just say one thing um about just uh, maybe i should have finished on that actually um um, um okay. there was sort of i think the thing also in taking coalitions and working effectively, one of the key things is also making sure you you're very you have clarity about the exam question you're trying to answer, um, right? Because of course co the coalitions can be unwieldy. So in addition to the action orientation that Kane mentioned, um, and you mentioned Harriet that social mobility or the lack of it in places like the UK can be really really problematic. So there's lots of lots of potential for the individual, their community the nation, the world, et cetera. Um, so the, the exam question, I think, was um, given the, the, the competency of Red Badge and those around the table uh, and the power of, of, of digital, how can the power of digital technology be harnessed um, to address the social mobility challenge at scale and sustainable, so sustainably? Very simple question um, at the framing of, and what Ken's just described is obviously then the journey that, 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 that's flowed since then. Yeah, now that's brilliantly put. And I think what you're seeing or hearing here, both hopefully, is the sort of the, the purpose uh, uh, being defined, uh, collecting people 
uh, uh, that are in a position, as Manny and Kane described, to solve a set of very tightly defined uh, uh, questions. And, and together, this relatively small, powerful group, uh, many with uh, plenty of other things to fill uh, their capacity, really have created, and what we'll be sharing in the next couple of weeks is uh, a powerful minimum viable product that really allows the young adults uh, uh, who have this extraordinary potential, uh, but may either not know it or be connected to those that know it, uh, can enter a platform, uh, a simple environment that connects them to interviews, to jobs, to coaching, uh, to mentoring, allows them to enter this world of really, really helpful uh, 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 partners and helpful corporations who really want to have a diverse intake uh, of amazing young people. So all of that has come together uh, uh, to create um, a very meaningful product. We're calling it the platform Open Doors and our sort of front door, if you like, to that platform is a, a skills-based helper, a skills advisor uh, for our young adults to come and, and build up their confidence and their skill set. And so we're excited, as you can tell, we feel like we've, um, we've been birthing uh, uh, um, uh, all of us uh, uh, together. And some, a, a question that's sort of coming up, I think, from people that I'd love to get Manny and, and Kane's view on is, what is your advice to people who say, oh, I'd like to get involved with that, <laughs> what we're doing, or something that you feel passionately about that you've got others or want to find others who share that purpose? So you guys are very, very, I have to say, exceptional, both in your backgrounds, your subject matter expertise, the type of men you are, and how you you lead and uh, uh, um, want to get stuff done. That that not everyone can find a Manny or a Kane. I should say that up front. But the advice that you would give to others, uh, what would that look like as people think about how they can express their passion, their purpose, and their enlightened self interest in something uh, uh, their own mission beyond? Kane, you want to go first? uh sure i can go i can go first so um i think the key for this so if we're looking at systemic change like grand challenges um a lot of sort of organizations are working in isolation and i feel that um the systemic challenges the systemic change the grand challenges cannot be tackled by any one organization and so really it's it's about the cross-sector collaboration putting aside differences competitors working together um <clears throat> if they want to be you know fulfill a purpose or their esg metrics and really kind of as manny described earlier uh, be a conscious business that has enlightened self-interest and wants to represent all stakeholders then lean in and work with other organizations that's uh, including competitors because i think that diverse thought that collective impact and the kind of the power of multiple stakeholders multiple organizations all working together um is the key to how you're actually going to drive systemic change that would be my advice and I, just to build on that and to maybe take it down, because um, of course, you know, system change can be scary for, for people. These are big topics that we're talking about. And in, in the case of the thing that we're building, obviously what we're trying, one of the things we found was that there are many, many, many fragmented efforts, many really good solutions, but they're really fragmented. Uh, and so the key solution was to, is to use, kind of use um, te um, technology, uh, digital, to find a way of actually building an ecosystem um, connecting the ecosystem and scaling the ecosystems. And that's a system level change. At an individual level, I would say, drawing on the principles that Harriet and Kane have just been talking about, having a creative mindset and having a can-do mindset are really important things. So 
there's a sadness in what I'm about to share um, as an insight. And that sadness is we are all of us unique, of course, as human beings. But sadly, um, it's rare that we have an idea or have a passion for something that someone else somewhere some someone else somewhere else doesn't have or share right so it's really important once you have that insight to think about in my organization who else is it that has that might share this idea this passion to do x or y how might i work cross functionally with someone in a different department to take to make something happen more effectively together and so on and so that concept of having a collaborative mindset but also just being action oriented, uh, making stuff happening, championing things um, uh, and so on is also important, I would I would suggest. And just one final thing, I know we're kind of we're coming out of time, but so we've worked in our business with lots of organizations and just one thing jumped to my mind as you were asking that question. So an organization, very big global, globally leading financial services organization, um, introduced their value set. I was privileged to be on a kind of judging panel along with some eminent people and uh, you know looking at a deep pack of shortlists and so on regret with regrets that i allowed myself to do this but as i went through it and i met with the other eminent uh, panelists we were struck by a couple of things one of them was pretty much everyone who'd been shortlisted or most of them were extraordinarily high achieving within the business as in you know, in terms of their core business absolutely high achieving and yet they had found time to, to do that uh, piece of work and everything else and they were just amazing so the, the concept, the, the principle, if you want something done, ask a busy person is really important. So uh, I, would, I would say, don't wait until you're 60 or 70 or 80, nothing wrong with 60 or 70 or 80 years doing stuff. There are things you can be doing now in your work, yeah. alongside your work, outside your work uh, as well. That is brilliant advice. People pay two grand an hour for, uh, I'm not suggesting that's what you charge. For <laughs> yeah. That's A cheap, marvelous probably. question here from, Actually, someone that has worked for me on the very, very first uh, digital strategy I embraced. We actually called it the People, Planet, Profits. And David here, David Long, who now runs his own uh, 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 business and does some amazing purposeful work with the NHS, uh, as well as others, says, perhaps he, he knows me too well, but has said, so how do you manage conflict or differences of opinion within the group? And um, well, I'm not aware that we've had any, but that's the, uh, no, I'm teasing. Of course we have differences of opinion. I think, I think we, you, 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 I would say there are two or three things and, and Manny and Kane can, can add uh, one each. But first of all, I think you need to keep the working group relatively small and you need to have a team that there's no point if everyone has exactly the same skill sets and abilities, uh, uh, you know, someone's going to become superfluous. Whereas if you all bring quite different things to the table, uh, then I think um, um, it is easier to respect everyone's uh, 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 opinions. Thirdly, David, I always believe that a lot of communication uh, being open when something annoys or upsets or troubles or worries or doesn't please you. So being open and, and direct in a constructive way. And back to Manny's point, always going back to um, what was the exam question? What is it we're here to do? Is this core to it? And then I think you always need someone um, who is good at prioritizing and ensuring uh, that we're making steps towards uh, that end in mind. But we have lots of opinions, but we probably do more work uh, than we do share opinions. But Manny Kane, as a last comment uh, on this issue of, you know, taking all these amazing people, how do you make it work together? What's your insight or guidance? Um, all of the above. Um, and it's um, it's the mission, stupid. Oh, someone said it's the economy, stupid. Uh, it's a mission. So that kind of that guiding light of what is it we're here to do, um, and you know, setting out clear principles as we did with mission beyond at the outset is really important to, to to guide. But also, I think being open to the concept of absolute you know diversity of thought uh, can be a really powerful force for change and and for success. So I facilitate lots of groups and and so on and. Um, and I learned, I used to be scared sometimes, actually, of, you know, you're facilitating a group, there are sort of different, you know, there's tension. 
And what I learned over time was actually those are sometimes the richest moments, actually, because in those moments of tension come really strong creative outputs and so on. Obviously, they need to be managed sensitively, but I would say don't fear them. Let the mission guide you. Uh, go back to your principles and your values, and they'll help you through. Thank you, Manny. One last point from you, Kane. And then yeah, I was going to I was gonna say very similar. You know, there's nothing wrong with conflict. Actually, if you know, at, in any organization, if you're at a boardroom of a red badger and you're all agreeing, you're probably in an echo chamber. And actually, you know, you conflict as you as you and tension, as you say, Manny, you know, results in clarifying moments. That's also a phrase I've stolen from you, Manny. You say that all the time. Um, and it's just how, then how you deal with it. So divide, diverse thinking, collective intelligence, you want um, people from different backgrounds, different experiences, different ways of thinking, and that results in tension. But it's then how you communicate, how you focus on the mission, um, that will um, kind of uh, get you through it. But the, the more diverse you are, the more ideas you're going to have. Um, and then the, the greater chance you're going to have of achieving the mission. Fantastic. Well, I think everyone understands why if uh, you get the chance to work with people like Manny Kane and others, why it is uh, a joy as well as producing something that we're very excited about. More on that. We'll record the session. We'll post it. You can see it live on harrietgreen.com too. But a big, big thank you to Manny Ahmadi and Kane Ulla uh, in this amazing series of mission, purpose, and impact in our lives. Thank you all. Harriet, fantastic. Thank you so much for convening this. Um, you're a star and I um, <laughs> hope it's been useful to, to, um, to listeners and watchers. Observe. Thank Likewise, you. Likewise, really enjoyed it. Thank you, Harriet. Enjoy to watch.